So my name is Eddie Brody Mensa and I am the water guy and founder of a social enterprise called Give Me Tap. But what I really want to talk to you about today is my journey and my journey through coming from where I am before in 2009 to where I am today and how that journey has made me into a more giving person. So the title of my talk today is How Being Selfish Can Actually Help Others. Um, so I'm not sure if this will work properly because it's a different type of presentation, not a PowerPoint one. Uh, but to begin with, it's let's first define selfishness. And so here you have it here up on the screen. And our selfishness often is taken on being selfish. It's taken as one oneself is concerned with only oneself, probably to the disregard of others. But I really start to think, you know, throughout my whole life I've been giving and doing a lot for so many people and we kept busy through education and stuff, but I've wondered how much time do I devote to myself? You know, do I give myself words of encouragement and hope? Do I sit alone and actually not feel bored by being just with my own self? Do I follow my own instincts or ask for help when I need it? And these sort of questions were really, really coming to surface when I was 24. And the reason why 24 is significant for me is in July 2009, I was a 24-year-old kid in the University of Manchester and I, I found that 25 was only going to be nine months ahead. And like for me, when I was younger, I always believed that becoming 25 was like a really big deal. Once you get to 25, you have the best year and it all goes downhill from there. <laughs> so I really, really need to prepare myself. And so in order to do that, I spent a lot of time reading and I decided to go inwards and research within myself to find out what was I about? Who was I really? So I went on a spiritual journey. I started reading a lot about manhood and what it meant to be a man and to grow up. A lot about what it meant to be healthy and physically fit. And a lot of that was around being physically fit. And that's when I stumbled upon a program called P90X. And this was a 90-day fitness program where essentially I would work out every single day and the ambition was to get a six-pack. You know, something all men dream of getting to attract all those ladies. So at 24 years old, I thought if I didn't have a six-pack by 25, because everything goes downhill, I would never have one ever in my whole life. <laughs> so that set me on a whirlwind journey of being devoted to something. And I sat down with myself and trained endlessly. And through all that training, I was drinking so much water. I mean, to put it into context, I weighed about 15 and a half stone then. And in order to, to have my water intake, the government recommends two liters, I was drinking some five liters of water every single day so that I could maintain my training. But in order to do that, I needed to drink water, but not just at home, but also when I was out and about. You know, because in the UK, we have flea throw and tap water, so immediately as I go from my house, I can refill a bottle and drink water to my heart's content. But you know, once I left my home, that was a very different story. I presented this, this thing here where I normally had to consume it through a bottle of water. Because often when I'm going to shops, they wouldn't want to greet me well and give me tap water. You know, I was often met with disdain looks of, you're a cheapskate and why can't you buy something first? And I thought to myself more and more, this is actually costing me a lot of money, and I'm a student here, doing, a, doing my degree, and I want to get a six pack, and you're preventing me. <laughs> now, I can't drink all the water I need to really, really stay hydrated. And then I thought, well, this is costing me loads of money, but also it has numerous other effects, be it the amount of plastic wasting that's generated in society. So there's some 13 billion plastic bottles that are actually consumed and then discarded right here in the UK. And we put it into some context as well, you can actually wrap that all around the globe and go around. And that's how vast the problem this is. And with only 20% of plastic bottles being recycled, 
it's a, it's a real waste of resources, of oil, of everything that we have in the society that's currently here. And there's all the issues with water scarcity. So a lot of water will actually get taken from different regions and bottled and sent to us. So I thought to myself, you know, why were people drinking bottled water? And why was I drinking bottled water? You know, tap water is amazing here. And I've come to realise that it was mainly from sort of three things. That there was a sense of embarrassment now asking for tap water. You know, you normally seen as being a cheapskate because why can't you afford the finer things in life? You know, mountainous water. And <laughs> that was one of the reasons. There's a bit of rejection because you would ask for tap water and well, you would ask to be offered for water and then they'll bring you a bottle of water. And sometimes you felt a bit confrontation to say, actually, you know, what I really want is tap water. And then it was really convenient. Bottled water is everywhere and there is times where it is useful because it is everywhere around you so you can easily pick it up, especially if you're trying to stay away from those sugary beverages. So then I thought to myself, how could I get off this stuff and also learn the fact that there's one in six people across the whole world that don't actually have access to any clean drinking water. And you know, that really disturbed me that you know, right here in the UK, we have great access to water, and at the moment, there's still almost 700 million people that can't drink water without drinking it, knowing they're going to get diseases, and ultimately are going to die. And it was motivated by that, I thought, well, maybe I could help, because there's some women who are walking for 200, they spend 200 million hours a year just looking to collect water, and that water is of really, really poor quality, as the image is shown here. So I thought to myself, there we go, the us image here. Um, how could I change this? You know, how could I help people in the UK and myself still get my six pack? And then also help people on the continent of Africa in order to reduce the amount of people that didn't have access to clean drinking water. And so the idea came to me was to create a scheme, a water scheme called Give Me Tap. And essentially what Give Me Tap is, it's a, a water bottle that we distribute and sell that allows people to get free access to tap water from a network of cafes and restaurants in your local areas so that you can get free tap water, reduce the amount of plastic wastage and then for every single bottle we sell we're able to use six pounds from that to go towards funding water projects in Africa and so what that's meant is that we've been able to provide so many more people with water, reduce the amount of wastage that's left in our societies, and also save loads of money. I think that's really a good thing at the moment. So just to put it into context, you know, I was in the pursuit at 24 years old to get fit and to get healthy, just for myself and to really understand who I was. And through that, that if you like being selfish, being more absorbed with myself and trying to get an understanding of who I was, I was able to, to give more in a more fulfilling way. Because sometimes I think when we focus about trying to give so much, often we're giving because we want someone to give something back to us. When we're not centered in who we are, we give in the hope that someone will pay that favor or that someone will like us more, rather than giving and or helping just to help. Because the reward in itself is just to help. And from being able to, to do what I do now, we've been able to change 3,000 lives, been able to fund three water projects around the world, um, and we've been able to really redefine the way people are consuming water here in the UK. And we've been so lucky that there's been a great media support that's allowed us to spread our message to so many more people, so hopefully people can go back to tap water. And it was on sort of March the 6th when I woke up, and I was on the front page of the Observer, and that was a really, really cool experience. It was really nice to, to, get, to get people to see what we were trying to do. And not only see what we were trying to do, but off the back of that, we got to be able to fund a project because people were purchasing bottles and really supporting the movement, which is Give Me Tap, to make free water freely available to every human being across the world. And so from this whole journey that I've been on, I've been able to, to win some awards for the organization and really get people to sort of reassess the way in which they live in their lives. And just to go back on a point of success, I did manage to get a six pack at 25, which was really good. <laughs> and one tip is my friend. This is the project that we did in Namibia, basically.
this is the first water project I've got to go on. And this is where we basically built a vegetable garden. We um, installed a water borehole project. Um, we used the water to irrigate the land to grow vegetation and crop. And then we built a community centre so then we could elect a water committee that could essentially manage the whole sustainability of the project once we had left. And I think that's a really important component. Just to finish off my last sentence, that the reason why I got six pack of drank tap water, so if you want to get healthy and fit, you know, stick to tap. That's my, that's my advice. And so these are just some pictures of, of the, the experience that I've had, and I've had an amazing sort of few years. And you know, even though I might not have a six pack now because I'm working so much, I go to the gym. It's still an, an amazing experience, and I love every day doing what I do, and I hope to continue that. And just to sort of round up, it's really that you know I think. There's so much focus on being kept busy, especially in this sort of digital age. We're so distracted and we have to adhere to so many external demands and pressures that are placed on us. I think there's a lot of time that needs to be taken almost alone. And when we're alone, it's to really work on ourselves. And I think through working on ourselves, we can really then develop such that our efforts to help people can be even further multiplied. So I really encourage everyone to really turn inwards often and as much as you can to really appreciate, accept and know who you are and ultimately have a lot of fun and stay present but have a lot of fun because like, life's short anyway so enjoy that. I just wanted to leave you with a quote um, and this probably this quote sort of got its um, acclaim I think through the Coach Carter movie where a guy sort of talking about his deepest fears and this quote has really resonated with me in the fact that I think within every single one of us there's something deep within us that can really change the world and I think it's when we take that time out we can just not so much find it but connect with it and through connecting with that thing that's within us we can really really change the world so I encourage you all to do that and I'm trying to do that and work on that every single day and I just want to thank you all and, and TEDx and Daniel and everyone for inviting me to come here thank you so much